Eight things your surgeon doesn't tell you about your meniscus surgery rehab. Hey runner, so you had meniscus surgery, but you feel like you're not quite where you should be and you have no idea why. Well, part of it is because you don't know what you don't know. So I came up with the top eight things you should know about your meniscus rehab that your surgeon didn't tell you about. But before we do that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Running with arthritis without the knee pain is possible, and it only takes a few simple steps. So go ahead and subscribe so you can know exactly what to do to run without knee pain. Why you shouldn't use a pillow under your knee. One of the most common things patients do after knee surgery is they put a pillow under or behind their knee. They do it because it's most comfortable. But what they don't know is that it will make your knee hurt worse and your rehab take longer. See, when you put a pillow behind your knee, that's putting your knee in the most comfortable position but it's also making the back of your knee really tight. Keeping your knee in a bent position can make it get stuck there. And in order to walk normally, you need a straight knee. So if you put a pillow behind your knee, it will make it harder to straighten your knee. If it's harder to straighten your knee, it will become painful to walk. The more painful it is to walk, the more likely you're going to change the way you walk to compensate for it. And so then not only will you be rehabbing your knee, you'll be trying to force your knee to straighten out and you'll re be rehabbing your hip and your back because now they hurt because you're walking weird. So don't put a pillow under your knee for the first two weeks, maybe even the first whole month. But aren't I supposed to elevate my leg after surgery? So I have to put a pillow there. Yes, you should elevate your leg after surgery. This helps circulation and swelling. However, don't put your pillow behind your knee. Put it under your ankle. This will not only improve your body's ability to get rid of the swelling in your knee compared to having it under your knee, it will also give your knee a passive stretch to straighten out your knee. So stack the pillows high under your calf or ankle and let your knee relax. Let gravity stretch it out. Do this anytime you're resting. So if you're on the couch, in bed sleeping, sitting at a table for a while, you can even put your leg up on that chair. Do you know your recovery isn't done when you don't have pain? After meniscus surgery, one of the first things to recover is pain levels. And that's because most of your pain comes from the fact that you had surgery. The surgeon had to cut your skin to be able to see inside so they can take out or repair whatever was damaged. With surgical intervention being what it is now, surgeons know how to make the smallest cuts possible so you're left with three keyholes in your knee. So pain comes on from the fact that the surgeon cut into your skin. And when the inflammation related to that is gone, the pain's gone. Luckily, inflammation and pain can be managed by medication and at-home remedies like ice and e-stim units. I've seen patients have pain levels so low that they don't talk about pain anymore as soon as three days after surgery, maybe even a month after surgery. One time I had a patient see me three days after surgery and said she didn't know why she was in the clinic because her pain was gone. And I've had other patients after the first month say they were done with physical therapy because their pain was gone. The problem is physical therapists aren't there to get rid of pain. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, that's one thing that they do. But it's also to train your muscles to be stronger, be more flexible, and guide you in the proper timeline to get back to running. So it's great that your pain's gone. That means the healing's going well. But there are many other aspects to rehabbing after meniscus surgery that you cut out too soon, you're putting yourself at risk for injury or pain. It takes three months to get stronger. One of the things that physical therapists help with after meniscus surgery is getting your strength back. Many patients will think their full strength is back when they can walk without crutches or a limp. And yes, that means some strength is back, but full strength isn't back. In general, it takes three months to gain strength if you're starting from scratch. It takes about one week for muscles to start losing strength from not exercising. And depending on how long your problem's been going on, it can take one to two times that amount to get it back. So let's say you stopped strength training certain muscles because it bugged your knee. And at some point you saw your physician, decided surgery was the right option, but their schedule meant you booked out three months in advance for surgery. So now you're not strength training for at least three months leading up to surgery. 
even if you were allowed to start strength training those muscles the day after surgery, which is usually not because of the healing time, it would still take three to six months to get that strength back. And what if you can't do the exercises that you know strengthen those muscles because it still hurts after surgery or your knee is so swollen or your knee doesn't move that way yet? Now what are you supposed to do? Just wait six months until you can squat again? Nope. That's what a physical therapist guides you through. Teaching and guiding you in the exercises that strengthen those same muscles in a different position. This way, when your knee can bend that way, you have some strength more than you would have had if you just waited those six months. This makes those squats or other movement even easier. Did you know it takes one year to gain flexibility? Flexibility is one of those things that physical therapists guide you through during your rehab process and it doesn't come back just because the pain's gone. Our muscles don't like change. So they resist it at every step of the way and you have to keep pushing through to a point. So when you're rehabbing your knee after meniscus surgery, you may notice that some days the back of your leg is super flexible. Maybe you can even touch your toes, but the next day you can't even reach your knees. What gives? See, when you stretch out, if you stretch too far, too fast, your muscles rebound. They actually tighten up again because they sense danger and think you've gone too far, even though it's unlikely. So it takes progressive stretching in a variety of ways to stretch out the muscles for good. So they're flexible and even more flexible than they were before surgery. Insurance doesn't pay for everything you need. I hate to break it to you, but insurance doesn't cover everything you need. Said another way, just because insurance doesn't pay for it doesn't mean you don't need it. Your surgeon may recommend you need something and then you find out your insurance doesn't pay for it. These could be things during your rehab visits. In the rehab space, insurance companies have very specific guidelines of what they will and will not cover and physical therapists need to get paid. So they do what insurance will pay them to do. Typically no more, no less. Many companies now will talk about add-on services that they can provide that insurance doesn't pay for. I even had patients automatically assume that if it's a cash add-on, that it wasn't necessary and it was just another way for the company to make money. That's not necessarily the case. In my business, I'm also a certified personal trainer and certified nu nutrition coach, just as an example. And most insurance don't pay for those things. I got certified in them because I felt my knowledge in these areas was lacking and they were things my clients needed. So I offer them in addition to being a physical therapist in the state of Nevada. My clients benefit from continued progressive strength and mobility training, but insurance caps out if the patient's able to do the exercise program themselves. My clients also benefit from nutrition information about what kinds of foods and ingredients flare or stop inflammation, but insurance doesn't pay for that. All of those things sound pretty important when getting back to running after meniscus surgery, right? Your rehab timeline changes depending on the age of the problem. You're Googling and asking how long it'll take until your, your knee feels better or until you're running again after meniscus surgery. You're going to get some frustrating answers because it depends. It depends on how long the problem's been going on or the age of the problem, other health problems, and if there were any complications during surgery. The latter two are obvious, so I'll talk about the former. If you've been dealing with a meniscus problem for years or decades before taking care of it, it's going to take a lot longer than it would have had you only been dealing with it for weeks or months. Now, not everyone has the ability to get things taken care of super quick, but I'm not talking about waiting for years or decades to have surgery, but not doing anything else. No, the other things count as trying to take care of it. But still, the longer it's been an issue, the longer it's an issue. Because see, here's the thing. Here's, there's this threshold for the inflammatory stage in your body. Inflammation is good when you're healing because that's what ignites the healing process. But once the inflammation reaches a certain point, a threshold, it's out of control and your body needs more time and resources to heal. So if you've been dealing with this problem for years, the inflammation has been low key, well not so low key, for years, so your inflammatory gauge isn't starting at zero or even close to it by the time you have surgery. It's already higher up on the chart, so it doesn't take much else to hit it or go above the threshold. But if you've only been dealing with the problem for a few weeks or months, it's more likely that inflammatory gauge is lower on the chart than if you had waited years or decades. 
So for one person, rehabbing from surgery may take six months, but for you, it may take a year. The longer the problem's been going on, the longer it takes it to go away. Your knee may hurt on and off for a year. This is a frustrating one. Your knee is going to bug you on and off for another year, at least after surgery. See, pain is your body's warning sign that something is or could be wrong. It tells you to stop what you're doing so you don't get hurt. Unfortunately, sometimes your body doesn't get it right. It gets it right when you're near an open flame or put your hand too close to the stovetop burner. You start to feel the heat or maybe even touch it a little and you feel the pain. This forces you to back up, pull your hand away, keeps you from danger. Unfortunately, when you've had pain and inflammation in your knee, your body sometimes gets the signal mixed up and your brain wants to tell you to stop doing something so it sends you the pain signal. But really, it sent the pain signal too early. It sent it because before your surgery, this type of movement, exercise, amount of running caused your meniscus to flip and make your knee lock. But you haven't done this, whatever it is, since before surgery, so the signal's preemptive. Another reason you'll get pain on and off for a year is because of inflammation. It will come and go, and when there's inflammation in your knee, there's pain. I'll explain more about inflammation or swelling in the next section. Every time you do something new, your knee will swell after meniscus surgery. So this is another frustrating one. Your knee will swell every time you do something you hadn't done ever or since your meniscus surgery. Remember when I said that inflammation is part of the healing process? Well, every time you do something new or something you haven't done since surgery, your body's on guard and ready to start the healing process from any kind of injury or danger. And right now, anything new or new since surgery, your body thinks is dangerous. So it gets a little swollen. A few examples include you go up and down the stairs for the first time. You walk a mile the first time and every new mile after that. You go to the grocery store. You go to an amusement park. You walk on uneven ground. You walk on the beach. You run for the first time. You do a new exercise. You add more time to your exercise routine. You ride a bike for the first time. You hold a stretch for longer. You do anything in the heat for the first time, or you get stressed out from work, home, or other relationships. Those are just a few examples. And when I say the first time, it's really the first few times. So anytime you do something new, or it's still like new, ice the heck out of your knee for 20 minutes. So to combat the pain and inflammation you'll get, ice your knee with anything new. Bonus tip, the thing your surgeon isn't telling you. Ice soon and ice often. Ice is one of the best anti-inflammatory and pain relieving techniques you can do right at home. Most of my clients stop icing too soon. Ice is your best friend. Within two weeks since surgery, ice every hour you're awake for 20 minutes. Two to four weeks after surgery, ice five times a day for 20 minutes at a time. Four to eight weeks after surgery, ice two to three times for 20 minutes. Eight to 12 weeks, ice one to two times a day for 20 minutes. 12 weeks and beyond, ice after every run, after every strength workout, ice after every stretching workout, ice at the end of the day, anytime you do something new or feel swelling. There you have it, eight things your surgeon doesn't tell you about your knee after meniscus surgery. And it's not their fault they didn't tell you. They don't have time. And it's not explicitly asked, they probably aren't thinking about it. I spent so many hours with my patients and clients after they've had meniscus surgery that these are some of the top questions they ask me because their surgeon didn't tell them. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time a new video comes up so that you can run without knee pain.